Welcome to another video. Today we will have a closer look at the Mercedes mirror stays because a lot of people were asking me about these stays and how they can be legal. So we will have a look at them at the model and we will design a mirror in Katia today. And I want to show you how a Formula One engineer is approaching such a design job. So first of all, the mirror housing rules are rule 364. And um, there are three sections. There is section A, this is for the mirror body, so for the housing itself. Then there is section B, this is for the mirror inner stay. And there is section C, this is for the mirror rear stay. This is where it's getting interesting later. So we have our model here. I have the most important reference surfaces and volumes here. And first of all, if we have a look through the rules, we can see that at the end of section A, it says that the mirror housing needs to lie in our reference volume mirror housing. So this is article 13, which I have here. And this is that tiny little box here. So within that volume needs to be our mirror housing. So if we then look at the rules, it's pretty short, so it's pretty easy. Um, the only thing it says about the mirror housing is that in Z it needs to be separated by 80 millimeters, so it needs to be 80 millimeter high. Um, in Y it needs to be separated by at most 160 millimeters, so it can be 160 millimeters wide. And um, in Article 3 here it says that um, the angle can be between 60 and 70 degree. So let's have a look at this. I have my play folder here. So let's have a look at the mirror. I also um, sorted it in mirror housing. So that's article A, inner stay and rear stay. So let's have a look how we approach something like this. First of all, we look at the first three sections that I was just reading and we create such a profile. It's basically a rectangular profile. And when we approach this job, we also need to think about where do we want to put the mirror housing. In previous years, Formula One teams always pushed the mirror housing as far outboard as possible so that the inner stay is as long as possible. So it's, it's an horizontal element that's additionally creating downwash. So that's an aerodynamic advantage. Driver visibility completely doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is aerodynamic advantage. So if we think about it, of recent years and also this year the most important thing is outwash we want to have the mirror housing as far outboard as possible so create our we create our rectangle on the outside of this rec, of this uh, regulation box and in terms of height we're not sure yet let's see how it goes uh, let's position it roughly in the middle and i chose an angle of 60 degree this is just defined by that line here 60 degree so um, it's very easy to change, but let's start here. Um, we can switch our rack box off and just check if we designed it correctly later on. So if you have this mirror housing, you simply extrude that profile and you create our rough box for the mirror housing. If we read a little bit further, we can see that in section four here, it says that the front face needs to be parallel and maximum 75 millimeter forward of the rear face. And when measured in X direction, that's also important. So if we have a look at what we designed here now, we can see that um, if we measure in X direction, so X is the forwarding, is the forward, direction you can see it here this is our x axis that's our z axis that's our y axis so measured in x it's 75 millimeters and both are parallel the front face and the rear face are parallel our height we chose to do it in 70 millimeters 80 is allowed so that's fine and the width is basically from this side to that side and it's 160 in y so that's the maximum allowed volume so this is our basic um, mirror housing and now we just simply use some edges around it so we 
we just fill it the whole thing and then we have a pretty nice mirror housing. So we started from this simple profile, very easy to control. And now that is our mirror housing. To check if it's legal, we see if it's in the box, it's right on the edge here. So we have to be careful with production tolerances that we don't stick through the box later on at the real car. But other than that, it's perfectly legal. It's within the box. If we send cut data like this to the FIA, it will be fine because we are within the box. So we designed our mirror housing and now let's have a look at the inner stay, section B. It's fairly straightforward. There are four sections and let's have a look how we can design something like this. Basically, section one says that the mirror stay should be between the um, most forward point of the inner side of the mirror and the most rearward point of the mirror housing. And um, section two says that it shouldn't be too high, so not what Ferrari used to do in recent years, but the stay is somewhere at the top. It should be at the lower side and it should lie inboard of the inboard face. So that's very important. So not one clever Formula One engineer comes around and puts the inner stay on the outboard side. So it needs to be on the inboard side of the mirror housing. That's done. And very important, and this is where it's getting interesting, it, show, it should form no more than a single section when intersected by any Z-plane or Y-plane. So any Z-plane or Y-plane. So that's pretty easy to, to design. We just have a, a guide here, which is a horizontal line and a vertical line with a corner around here. And we design a, a simple profile here. Of course, I designed that a little bit downwashing, so that's 10 degree. Uh, nice thing about downwash here, if we sweep this around here, is that this downwashing element becomes an inwashing element. So let's have a look how that looks like. And basically it's something like this. So this is basically that profile. It always stays the same and we just sweep it along this guide around the corner here and we have an inwashing element. We can later on play with the guides and uh, everything around here, but that's our simple mirror inner stay. So now we designed the mirror housing and the inner stay. And now let's have a look at paragraph C. So the mirror rear stay. And this is where it's getting interesting. Uh, first of all, pretty straightforward, the first two articles. It should lie basically between the inner and outer edge of the mirror housing. It shouldn't be any wider than this. And um, the mirror rear stay should lie behind the mirror housing. So again, such a thing that not some clever engineers come around and design the rear stay in front of the mirror housing. It needs to be behind it. And the interesting part and the reason why we have this design discussion now is um, section three, when cut by any X plane form a single section. So, and this is pretty much where it's different from our paragraph B, because if we go back to paragraph B, we can see that it should, the inner stay should form a single section when intersected by any Z or Y plane. So they defined two planes here and it has to be a single section. For the rear stay, they only define one plane, the X plane. They could also say X plane and Z plane, and then we wouldn't have this discussion of multiple elements, but they only say X plane. So when cut by this X plane, um, they can be 50 millimeter high, and the section that you get should then not be wider than 10 millimeters in Y. So um, another thing is that it should be forward of the 1300 measured from the front axle. And um, I can show you this here. This is basically that plane it should be 1300 millimeters away from the front axle. So we have a lot of space for that. So these rear stays can be really long. And um, let's have a look how we would design this now. So obviously, it needs to be connected to the mirror housing so we can declare it as the rear stay. So how can we do this? We can do it as a single element and we could basically design something that looks like this. This is what Mercedes showed at their launch. And it's one large 
element that's basically helping you with outwash. And if we look at this from the front, we can see that it's not wider than the mirror housing, so it's fine. It is, it is 50 millimeter high, roughly. <laughs> and um, yeah, just a thin element that is connected to the mirror housing at this point. But obviously, we could have a bigger aerodynamic effect if the mirror wouldn't shadow big parts of it. So let's push our mirror housing a little bit further up so we have a bigger aerodynamic effect here. So we go back to our mirror housing, then everything is designed to that reference point. So we can just push it 20 millimeter further up. And suddenly we have a mirror housing that is sitting right on the top edge and at the outboard edge of the rec box, so which is fine. This is the maximum we can do. And we have the maximum aerodynamic effect from the lower element because the full 50 millimeters are exposed. So our mirror housing here is now only 70 millimeter high. We didn't choose to use these 80 millimeters because then we can have the maximum 50 millimeters for the lower element. So we have the maximum aerodynamic effect. So, but I can take it a step further now because if we um, do an intersection in X, which is basically this, and we cut through the whole thing, we can see that this forms a single section, right? So this element is always a single section. But what if I create multiple elements now where the trailing edge of the forward element is not overlapping the leading edge of the next element? Then we would also create a single section. So let's have a look how we can do this. And we have our single element here. Let's switch this off. And now let's have a look at our multiple elements. So basically you create these elements, not one by one, you just create the first element and then just copy it. So I chose to design um, a profile with a certain camber, a pretty small profile. Of course, they are 50 millimeter high like the previous element. I have a tiny overlap here with the housing, so they are connected with that. So this can be declared as the rear mirror stay. And we have our complete element here. We then simply copy that and create such a cascade of elements here. And what happens here now is that they are not overlapping each other in X, but I can create a nice large cascade. If we look at it from the front, we see that it's not wider than, it's not wider than our mirror housing. It's within the mirror housing. We have pretty large gaps, but that's okay. It's helping definitely with outwash. We have the maximum aerodynamic effect because we even made the mirror housing smaller to have the full height of these elements. And if we go through this now, and we check our X intersections, we can see that this forms a single section. And as soon as we are done here, we are not yet at the leading edge of the next element. So this starts now, and now that's a single section. And now we go to the next element. This is done, single section. And now the next single section. So this is absolutely fine. This is legal as the rules are written. If that's really the intention of the rules is another story, but on the other hand, it won't be a huge performance differentiator. And it's just a nice feature showing that some teams are thinking out of the box. Another thing to make this even more extreme is that we have five elements here, five vertical elements, and we have our inner stay. If we now use our inner stay and make it super short, so we can change this from 150 millimeters width in, in Y, we can change it to 30 millimeters, and now let's have a look what we do here. And suddenly it looks like this. Suddenly we have an element more 
So we have six vertical elements that help us with outwash. And that's pretty exactly what Mercedes and Aston Martin were doing now. And it's a clever design and only because the rules here in section three say that it's only cut by an X-plane and these intersections should form a single section. We have the discussion we are having right now. Um, there's also a section D and section E, but that's only about how to trim all these elements together to the thing we call mirror and how to trim the mirror to the rest of the bodywork. So I hope you like this little insight and let me know if you want to see any more of these videos where we design things together in the comments below. See you at the next video.